All right, so a lot of debate has been going around about the provisional squad of Harambe Stars to the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations being hosted in Egypt. We already know that. And questions about the goalkeeper up front in terms of the striker and everyone wondering who would possibly be making the final squad and indeed the starting 11. Well, I've tried to rack my brain. I've spoken to journalists, but I thought, you know what, Chico? What about you actually ask someone who has an authority in this subject? So guess who I decided to get a hold of? None other than the big man himself, former Harambe Stars coach, former Tusker coach, former goalkeeper, like he's the perfect person. And also the last man to take us to the Africa Cup of Nations. That's about 15 years ago. All right, so Jacob Gosmule here, and uh, we can take a walk as we talk, Ghost. First and foremost, Provisional 30-man squad, your initial thoughts, raw. I think uh, Minye has made a very good squad, very balanced, and uh, I believe that uh, that is a squad that can go to the second round because uh, when you look at the squad, he has basically maintained the players that he used in the qualifiers, and uh, as a good coach, you don't change much of that, and he has included some players that have shown also a good character, somebody like uh, Were has come in for FC Leopards. He's shown he can change a game maybe even the last minute. I mean, he has got some brilliance, some uh, individual prowess that he can do things. So I think for me, it's a very balanced side. All right, Ghost, uh, here's another quick question. You've talked about a very balanced side, but there's an uproar about two keepers who happen to be plying their trades for Kariobangi Sharks. Would you have chosen them? Well, I wouldn't. Uh, I would say clearly that also was uh, something I don't know. Minya tried to explain that uh, he's thinking about the future, right? I, I, I accept the future is important. However, you don't have to keep us from one, one, one side because we have basically 30, around 37, 34 matches in the season. You can't have interchange of keepers week in, week out. So I think he has denied another keeper an opportunity who has been playing week in, week out because they are all local based from one club. So I don't know what reason Minya did, but I wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have done that. Ghost, okay, to be straight with you, Kilomtu Nasema, you know, hey, and then it's Karibangi Sharks and that connection to the president of the federation. And you're thinking, yeah, back in your day, we remember Akina Nyamwe and the likes. There was a lot of influence. Let's be real about that. Do you think that could have played a part, the team they're from and who's in charge of the federation? Chico, let me tell you one thing. As a coach, I don't believe anybody has any influence on the team selection. I would say uh, before Sebastian Minye came, there could have been a hand in the federation. But after Sebastian Minye took over, I saw his first squad, the players that he was given by Okumbi, then he came and he is a man of his own brain. I don't think there is any influence from any quarters. I'm, I'm looking at that squad. If I was Minye right now, I would pick the same players apart from that goalkeeping issue. Goalkeeping. Oh, now that you say you pick the same players, Ghost Amesema, by the way, uh, the story I influence from President Nick Mwendua, that's all talk. But you have said you would have picked the same players apart from those goalkeeping uh, selections. But here's a question, another issue, Jesse Were. He is banging in goals in Zambia on the continental stage, and then you drop him. Uh, for who? Uh, Chico, let me say... Masood? Let me tell you one thing. There are some things that only coaches see. Okay, fair As enough. a fan, we are emotional. As journalists, we have the statistics. And uh, as uh, football lovers, we have basic reasoning. But uh, until you go into a coaching class, then you will know why Minye has done what he has done. I respect Were, I congratulate him every day, he scores in Zambian League. I've watched him play for the national team. You know the record more than I do. And uh, when you look at Masood Juma uh, versus Were, I don't like to compare two players. However, look at uh, Masood. I remember vividly in uh, Sekafa in Machakos under Paul Put. He was brought in with an injury. He scored the second goal for Arambe Stars. I think he hasn't even... been playing goals consistently for a long time. He's not the first player who hasn't been playing and has been called to a national team. Uh, England has just named a team to play in the United Nations. Yeah. Uh, Hurricane has been named. He's been injured for a long time. Oh, but goes not years. Not, he's not played for, at, for too long and not played in pro, a proper game. This is Harry Kane. He just, he's been out, what, a month and a half maybe? 
this is Masood. Okay? <laughs> he has enough. done a lot for Arambe Stars and also he's a quality player. If you watch tactically the game that Kenya played, the last qualifier against Ghana, I think it was a mistake to remove Masood in that game because when he came out, we didn't have possession up front. We lost all the balls that came. But look at his contribution in 45 minutes. He had the ball, he could hold the ball to wait for the midfielders to come and play. You are looking at a player who can maintain possession at a high level. And uh, this is the national team, for heaven's sake, we are going for a big tournament. So, when you try to compare, I understand what Minya is talking about. But uh, for a normal Kenyan, I, I also understand the Kenyans because and, uh, I worked under the late Reynard Fabish, may God rest his soul in peace. He said Kenya has 50 million coaches, so it has not changed. <laughs> it hasn't changed, uh, that's true. I have my own opinions, uh, evaluating the game and so many other fans out there, as you've said, but we're emotional and coaches think differently. If you were to look at the two names that could possibly, one could possibly go, Clifton Miheso, Paul Were, pretty much play similar roles, but Clifton Miheso gives us that extra edge, utility, can play a fullback position also. Who in this squad would you say, apart from Bwire, who the coach already said is unlikely to make it, who would you say could make the final 23? Very difficult. However, we have some uh, players who are featured in the qualifiers will be in. I think all things staying equal no injuries, it's going to be a very diff big, big, uh, big decision for me in terms of uh, midfield and attack because that's where the crux of the matter is. But I think what I've seen about uh, Paul Were, uh, he's a player that as a coach you think it's 15 minutes to play and uh, he's on the bench, he can come in and turn out a game. Attack the team. And, yeah, forward. he can make an individual decision and go in and maybe make the goal that you are needing yeah. in a game. So I don't think Were will, uh, will miss in that squad. Uh, for Clifton Miheso, I know him, he is a utility as you say, but the competition is deadly because there is also a Timbe that you have to look at and uh, then you look at what Johanna has been performing for the side. So that midfield is going to be a very difficult decision for the coach to make. Ghosts, I'll put you on the spot now, seeing as uh, running out of time here. You're starting 11, considering the 30 players you know. How would you have set up? Because you're the last man to have gone to AFCON. You know what it takes. You know the challenges. So two questions. You're starting 11, and then our chances against Algeria, Senegal, and Tanzania getting out of that group. Let's start with your starting 11. Crazy. Uh, okay, Matasi will retain his position in goal. Uh, then we, looking at the back four, it's a battle of sorts. But um, I would think... Matasi, uh, Abud on the left if he's fully fit. Uh, <laughs> that central, I know, right? <laughs> that central is a bit tricky uh, because I, I know last time Musa Mohamed played there yeah. with Joash. Maybe I would maintain the same team. And then fullback right position, I don't think he's still well covered. Okay, Philomen yeah. played the first game, but still, I believe. Uh, I don't know which other utility player we have in that position. Mm -hmm. That one I'll pass. Then I'll go into the midfield. Of course, Mugubi will be there. Uh, Dennis Odiambo will be there. Of He's course. been fantastic. He, wow. has won, he has won his place and uh, has stayed. Then looking at right and left, I will lo I'll go for uh, Timbe. And then I will go for uh, Timbe, Johanna. And then Michael Olunga will be there. Then behind Michael, maybe Johanna Molo. So you'd play one up front and then pack that midfield? Yeah, that's the way it is. I mean, uh, I, I would do a 4-2-3-1 formation. I would think that. So either Johanna plays on the right and then Timbe on the left or right and then uh, somebody plays, the other Omolo plays behind Michael Olunga. That could be maybe my, my starting lineup. And as a coach, you're going into the Africa Cup of Nations, first games, and you're looking at Algeria, Tanzania and Senegal. Where do you expect to pick points if you are to make it past the group stage? Uh, Chico, I would believe that uh, every team has equal strength. The other teams are just good on paper in terms of FIFA rankings, but 90 minutes when uh, the tactics are right, Arambe Stars will rise to the occasion. I th my take is I think we can beat Algeria. Tanzania is a difficult nut to crack. However, I believe we can pick three points from Algeria or Tanzania and draw with Tanzania 
that's four points. That's enough to take you to the second stage. By the I like time the way you you're meet, ignoring Senegal. They, 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 no, you, when you meet Senegal, it's the last game in the group. So if you pick four points, you don't need the Senegal game. You're already qualified for uh, the last, uh, the next, the uh, yeah, the knockout stage. And that is what Kenya is looking at. There we go. Jacob Ghost, the Mule himself, a man who last took us to the Africa Cup of Nations, sharing his thoughts. All you want, understandably so, but he said, fans, emotional, and we have our opinions. 50 million coaches, the late Fabish said. <laughs> okay, so you and I have our opinions, but that's the provisional squad. And guess what? Uh, we will be supporting that team regardless of who's there. Ghost believes we can get out of the group stage with the right tactics. I think so too. I think we can beat Tanzania and also beat Algeria. And then who needs to beat Senegal? It doesn't matter. It's Chico's take. See you next week.